We're going to move on and talk about how to use the graph editor to fine tune an animation. To demonstrate the graph editor, I have a new scene here, which features a little barrel rolling down this hill. This lasts for 60 frames. So this barrel, which is primitive cylinder, has its position change and also its rotation change. So how to use a graph editor. I want to pick the object that has an animation, then go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And this will pop up a new window. So Graph Editor, and here's a Graph Editor. I'll talk about each of the sections of the Graph Editor to start. So the large area here looks like a grid. It's a graph area. And this is the area that shows the actual animation curves. These are all the animation curves. What is the animation curve? My animation curve is a curve that's threaded through each of the keyframes for a particular channel. So for example, this green line down here that runs at an angle, that's the rotate Y channel. It has three keyframes, one here, one here, and one here. And that curve is threaded through them. And what that curve also represents is where the in-betweens will be. And that's how Maya determines in-betweens. If Maya can see there's a keyframe here and a keyframe here, then those needs in-betweens in this middle area so I can draw a curve and then pick new positions along that curve to figure out where that object should be rotated for a particular frame on the timeline. And the way this graph works is time runs left to right. It's just like the timeline. You have frame 0 or frame 1 on the left, and it runs up to frame 60 or 66 in this case. So time's running left to right. So this keyframe at the end is around frame 67. This keyframe right here is around frame 40. The keyframe up here is around frame 0 or frame 1. So each one of these lines is a separate curve for a separate channel. All the little black dots, once again, are keyframes that the user has set. The lines or the curves are provided by Maya. So time runs left to right, and then value runs up and down. So let's say you look at this keyframe right here at the end. It's at frame 67, but what's its value? This again is just the rotate Y curve. What's the value at that point? What you can do is look at that keyframe dot and then drag your mouse left, and then you get a value. So this keyframe at frame 67 is a value of roughly negative 750. There's negative 700 and there's negative 800, somewhere in between those two. So time left to right value up and down. Now there is a list of channels over here on the left. At the very top, it'll show the node that's currently selected. In this case, I have the cylinder transform node selected. Because it's a transform node, which you normally animate, you get all the attributes that normally come with that. In this case, you have the translate XYZ, rotate XYZ, and scale XYZ. Now the way the animation works by default is when you do set a keyframe, all those channels are animated all at once including even visibility, and there's visibility right here. So if those are all animated, and they all have keyframes, they each get their own animation curve. What you can do on this left-hand column is click one channel at a time to take a look. So there's translate X curve, there's the translate Y curve, the Z, and so on. Here's the rotate curves and scale curves. Now some curves will be more exciting. Again, here's the rotate Y. That has a greater value change over time. I know it has a greater value change because it has a steeper slope. Whereas some of these curves that have no value change over time, because the animator didn't change that, have very flat looking curves. Now, as you switch between these curves, you might find it difficult to see some of them. And one trick is if you have a curve shown, you want to take a look at it closer. Hit the F key while your mouse is in this graph area. So F key will frame that up. So I'm just going to go through and frame them as I select them. And here's the translate Y, which is probably the most interesting curve. And that kind of just shows you how that barrel is moving down the hill in the Y direction. So Y values are diminishing over time as the barrel rolls down the hill. Now, as you frame up some of these curves, you might see that they're still flat. For instance, if I try to frame scale Z, F key is still perfectly flat. That means that the values do not change over time. Even though there's a number of keyframes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven keyframes, 
All those keyframes have the same value for scale Z. In fact, it's always a value of one because during the animation process, the scale is not changed. So it's one, 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 one in terms of the value. Now, if you do have a flat curve, and this is called a static curve, where the values don't change, it's not really affecting anything. So you can delete it if you want to. And if you want to delete a curve, just click a box over it or drag a box over it until it turns yellow, and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. And that channel will be removed from the graph editor, and then that channel will go back to being black in the channel box, which shows there's no animation on it. But because it was static, it doesn't matter. I can go to scale Y and do the same thing. Either click on the curve or drag a little box over it like that, delete it and get rid of it. Same with scale X, nothing going on there. Now the more exciting ones like rotate Y you want to keep. Now you might find that as you switch between these curves over here, all of a sudden one will disappear. Like where's my rotate Y? That's because it might be in a part of the graph area that's off screen. It might be over here or down here, we can't see it. So what you can do is hit F key again to reframe it. And it comes back into view and becomes centered once again. So there is a curve we need, rotate Y. It's changing over time. And of course, as is translate Y. And here's a case where it looks really shallow, but if I hit the F key, I can see the full slope of that. So F allows you to zoom in and frame in a little area so you can see the full detail of the curve. So again, these little black dots are keyframes, and you can select those if you want to. I can just click, drag a box over one, and when I do, the keyframe dot turns yellow, the surrounding segments of the curve turn white, and then you get little tangent handles. Now this might be based on what kind of curve you have, and in fact, there are different curve types, and different curve types affect the way the curve is flowing through the keyframes. One way to test that is just to pick all your keyframes, drag a box over all the keyframes of one curve, like this, so they'll all turn yellow, and go up to tangents up here in the graph editor menu. And this is where you can actually change your tangent types and therefore affect the way the curve is flowing. For example, I can go to linear and turn this into a linear curve. When it's a linear curve, the line segments are very flat in between keyframes. Very, very flat. If I click off it, you can see it a little bit better. Flat, 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 flat. In other words, it doesn't flow very smoothly. If I pick all these keyframes again, I can go back to Spline. And Spline will try to make a very smooth curve run through the keyframes. If I click off the curve and deselect it, you can see that now, because I picked Spline, it's much smoother as it runs through, and that's better for a smooth animation. So in any case, you can change your tangent types at any time. Just select your keyframes, go up to tangents, and pick spline or linear. And there's some other specialized ones. For instance, stepped. Stepped actually makes little steps where the value stays consistent and then changes over one frame. That's a very brutal style animation. Might be good for some very stylized robot movement or something like that, though. Most of the time, though, you'll probably want your tangents on spline or linear. And in fact, for any kind of smooth animation, spline is the best choice. Now, you can also move the tangent handles themselves. So, for example, I can pick the first keyframe up here, drag a little box over one end of the tangent. The tangents are those little pink lines. That end of the tangent will turn yellow. Then, what you can do is make sure you have your move tool on. I'll go back to outside the graph editor and click on my move tool. And then click drag that yellow end of the tangent handle to move it. And you'll see that the tangent's like a seesaw. Both sides move at once. Now I'll talk about how to break that tangent in a later video, but for now, just keep in mind you can click drag either end of the tangent handle to move it. Now if you move it really drastically, you can get some crazy bows in your curve, and that's probably not a good idea. But you can fine tune the shape of the curve through this. And of course, whenever the curve shape changes, the animation changes slightly. Because again, where the curve is determines where the in-betweens are. Imagine that Maya itself will put additional little dots on the curve, and those little additional dots are its own personal in-between keyframes. Now, once you're in here, you can also delete keyframes. If you find that you have too many or made it too close together, you can just draw a box over a keyframe and hit delete on your keyboard and make it go away. There's also ways to insert keyframes. We'll return to that in a second.
You'll notice that there's a red line here, and that's a time slider line. This just shows you what frame you're currently on. So if you drag your time slider here, you'll see this also updates. It'll tell you what frame you're on right here. In this case, I'm on frame 44. Now, again, I mentioned that you know value runs up and down, and time runs up to right. You can really see the exact value of a keyframe if you want to by selecting it. So I select keyframe, I go up here to the stats area. And the first little cell for the stats area is a frame number. The second cell is the actual value stored by that keyframe. Remember, I'm looking at a single curve right now. A single curve, a single channel. So this is the translate Y. So I pick one keyframe. This keyframe is at frame one in the timeline. And it stores a value of 16.438 for translate Y. In other words, it has that value for translate Y on frame one. So again, each curve is a separate channel. Being able to select a keyframe in that matter and looking up here is a great way to see your exact values. You can see exactly what frame you're on and exactly what value that keyframe has. And in fact, you can make changes here. If you want to give it a, a new value, enter a new value, for instance, an exact number like five, and the keyframe will actually move so it has that new exact value. So instead of having some weird decimal place value, which you might get through interactively animating, this way you can enter something very precise. You can also move keyframes in this fashion. Let's say you pick a keyframe here and you feel that maybe it's too late in the animation. You can go to this cell and give it a brand new frame number like frame 16. And then that keyframe will move to frame 16. Now beyond that, you can also interactively move keyframes here. If you're on your move tool, you can click drag the keyframe you have selected and simply interactively place it. Now, if you move up and down, that's changing the value. If you move left or right, that's changing the frame number. Now, it's freeform initially, but there is a way to magnet snap. There's a time snap right here. And when you have time snap on, you'll feel that it sticks a little bit to whole numbers, in other words, whole frame numbers. If that's off, then it's truly freeform, where there's no sticking at all. So that's a brief introduction to the graph editor. We're going to return to this in a later video and go into it in more depth in terms of how to make more edits to your curves to affect the animation.